Today we're gonna try and beat Chimps mode using the absolute worst rated towers in BT6, which would be the favorite traits and the Balloon Master Alchemist. Well, there's this thing called the Comprehensive Chimps Guide, which is basically a list made by the BT6 Index, which they release uh, after every single update. And in this list, they rate the towers in BT6 based on how useful and how good they are on Chimps mode. So you guys might notice a little bit of a theme going uh, with all these three towers, and that is that generally these are money-making towers. So because the, the fact that you can make money with them on chimps mode let me just upgrade i guess maybe you know what i should actually probably do this so let's go like this get the grape shot and maybe the long range on this guy just to kind of get more damage going and because you can make money on chimps mode with these towers that makes them super useless but that doesn't mean that these towers cannot attack and in fact that's not the only thing so for example even though you're seeing them as fifth years like for example the bma uh, or the favorite traits or the monkeyopolis uh, the reality is that this doesn't apply only to the fifth years but it applies to tier four tier three as well so basically the merchantmen are pretty, are pretty much uses in chips mode that then goes for the lead to gold and for the rubber to gold as well so now we're going to try and use those towers so basically the bottom pad buccaneer and the bottom pad uh, alchemist in general to try and beat chips mode now i brought it in as a hero to give counter detection to these guys and i have to you know i gotta be honest i don't think well these guys are pretty bad Bad, but I don't think that they're that bad because there are some tricks that we can pull with these towers So believe it or not, I'm not actually concerned or at least that concerned about DDTs I mean our DDT popping power is gonna be this thing the hotshot grapes and I guess the favorite traits Which is gonna be a bunch of boats bought by uh, you know I was thinking about what I want to upgrade Do I want to get the favorite traits or do I want to get uh, the I want to stop at the merchantman I think I'm gonna stop at the merchantman actually because what the favorite trait does is it gives them a little bit Let me just do hmm, what do I want to do with this one actually maybe we get the larger potions and get the faster throwings to do it like this so the favorite traits both give um gives a plus i think it's like plus one damage and a little bit of pierce to all of these guys to all of the merchantmen and above but because the favorite traits is just such an expensive tower for six thousand its main idea is to make money but because we're not making money i don't think we should be buying it in the first place I mean, maybe we could buy... How's the camo looking? So, Etienne is level 7, so the camo is not looking good. We should probably buy at least one of these guys. I'm going to get this guy to Crow's Nest, and then we're going to chill for a second. Okay, so the Moab is incoming, and here's the plan for it. I'm going to get a bunch of Perishing Potions. So, it's going to be a 0 to one on these guys. We can't upgrade them further to the Unstable Concoction. But these Perishing Potions, if you guys know what they do, well, they remove the Fortified Save, but they also do more damage to Moab class balloons. And that is, that's actually a very nice thing to have. So let me, oh, I spent all my money. I didn't even know this. So we're lacking a bunch of mob damage. So let's use, let's use the drones. And let's see if this is going to be enough. Oh, this is not looking like it's going to be enough. Or is it? No. Let's try this again. Let's do it like this. And let's use the drones a little bit faster this time. So the mob pops here. And then we can do the damage to the ceramics with our other towers. I think this is a lot better actually. Yes, there we go. And it's on. It's the the wackiest, the absolute wackiest chimps run that you've ever seen. But it's gonna happen, guys. We're, we're actually doing it. Man, this setup is so bad. These guys aren't defending anything. So let's get the favorite traits. This thing actually gets a little bit of attack speed, and it makes you think: Is it better to get the favorite traits with the trade empire? I don't think so, guys. I mean, it gets a decent amount of attack speed, but is the attack speed worth it? I don't think it is. I I'm not sure. It's it's way too expensive. It's like six thousand dollars, which is only gonna allow us to buy a handful. And when you look at the map, well, I chose Carve because this is a map that we haven't played that much. So I guess we can't fit a lot of them in the first place, but I don't know. I, I don't feel like doing that. We have to go for the 0 2 one, by the way, because the challenge is uh, to be using the bottom path only. So it's not like, like, I want to go for the one 2 0 but that's not going to be allowed because, you know, the challenge is the bottom path alchemists. Maybe I should switch a bunch of these guys to strong. I mean, it's not like they're doing bad. It's just they're not... They're not popping the Moab class balloons and we're losing to the insides. And if there's like a balloon in front of them, they're not focusing it. So I should probably have just a couple of them on strong. You can absolutely see why these are rated as the worst towers. They're even leaking round 54. We should probably restart this one actually. Okay, so let's use the ability now. The next round is going to be 55. It's a bunch of ceramics and then only one Moab at the end. So the ability is going to come off cooldown. But yeah, we took this one down and round... Not round, but level 10 on Etienne is coming in a second. So I'm really happy about that one. We're going to have another ability. I like having a bunch of abilities. It's like a tool to use. It's like something to, to bail you out of a, a bad situation. A bad situation like that one. What if I get the bottom pad, but also get the AMD? So maybe do something like this. 
Because I think this is still fair, isn't it? I mean, we're still going to go for the bottom path, but it's just we're choosing cross path. And this little bit of AMD might be useful for this boat. And especially because this guy's going to become a tree empire. You know what we could do? We could do AMD stacking. We could AMD stack on the absolute worst tower in the game to get buffed. It's probably not the worst tower to get buffed by. I don't know. Is this going to help? Is one single AMD going to help? I can't believe it. It's actually helping. DPS, please? Yes. Oh. Oh, that was just before it exited. I can't believe this happened. I think we found a round that these guys can beat by themselves. It's round 58. I have not clicked a single button. This is... We're making progress, guys. You know what? We should buy a couple of acid pools, I think. And I'm probably going to have to use uh, the UCAV as well. So let's do it like this. Let me use the drones early on so that the ability goes on cooldown. And then I'm going to use the UCAV now. And just kind of deal with this BOV. Yeah, our setup is absolutely whack. And I don't think that this thing is beating chips mode, guys. Uh, these are the worst hours for a reason, it seems like. Oh my god, they're so bad. Are they creating a regrow farm? It's looking like they are. Okay, so new problem. We are creating a regrow farm on this round. So uh, how do we do this? Do we brute force this round? You know, maybe I can fill one more at the top. Yes, nice. This guy's not going to be doing that much damage, but it's, it's nice having him, I think. So let's do it like this, get a little bit of extra damage going. And hopefully, hopefully this is enough because we just need, we just need damage sources. That's basically it. I mean, these guys are super, I, I think this is gonna, I think this is gonna be fine. So they are creating a little bit of a regrowth farm, but it's just, it's enough damage for now it looks like. But I'm thinking about rounds like 79. Is that thinking too far into the future? Are we even gonna make it to 79? <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, 63. Let's see how our lineup is going to do the worst towers versus round 63. So we have a lot of uh, instances of damage. I guess that's what's going for us. And these alchemists have a lot of peers, but it is... It's not even close, guys. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait as much as possible. And I'm going to try and get two waves with the UCIV. So now... And then hopefully it takes care of the first one. Yes. And then it's up for the second one. Yeah, this is exactly what I wanted to do. And then we're going to have the drones for the last one. That's super close, by the way, on the on the first wave. So uh, if we don't make it now, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it happen again. So hopefully these guys beat the ceramic waves. It's not looking good, guys. Can we do something to save this run? Like, let's say maybe we could, we could allow some towers into the game. Like, maybe we could allow a glue or something like that. So let's see how much of a difference one single glue is going to make. Oh my god, it's making all the difference, I think. Yes, yes, it's making all the difference. They're actually dealing with the waves thanks to one glue. So these guys, yeah, they just need a little bit of a helping hand, guys. So the next plan would be spamming bottom path alchemists, especially let the gold alchemists. And then, uh, you know, buffing them up with some attack speed. And I would probably, what else are we getting? And then it's just going to be some utility downs, right? Maybe just slow the balloons down a little bit, help them out in some other way. Okay, guys, so we might have a problem on this one. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to get the Relentless Glue right now. Or actually, do I want to... Let's just chill with this guy. Let's just chill with the Mob Glue. I'm going to have it as a 013, actually. So so these guys are not going to be able to beat it, by the way. But let's let's just let's just make sure that that's the case. And they don't actually beat it. And I'm going to try and buy an Ice Tower, I think. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get the Glue Strike as well along with this guy, the Druid of the Jungle, and hopefully this beats it. So let's get plus two. Oh my god, they just evaporated. Okay, so it was, it was actually that simple. You just get rid of the modifiers. You, you just get rid of the, the Rigo and you, you just add plus two damage. I mean, I guess the problem with this one is that it's like a bottom path. I would have loved to have it like a, a 2 four, zero just because it affects mob class doings, but it is what it is. It feels like the index was right, guys. I'm gonna be honest. It feels like the people doing the index were absolutely right, and these are the the worst towers in chimp mode that you can absolutely buy. I mean, the, these guys are not doing anything. And it's not even like I'm even buying the the bad cross paths. Like like they were talking about how the uh, bottom cross paths are, are are super bad, but it's like I haven't even reached the bottom cross paths, and I'm still losing. <laughs> What's happening? So how do we save this run? That's my question. So it's not looking that these guys are gonna are gonna do anything. Or missing a lot of cash and, and we're gonna have free play starting in a second so we should probably start thinking about some other ways of beating this so uh, let's just say for a second that everything is allowed let's just say that we're gonna give up on our challenge and we're gonna declare the uh, these guys to to absolutely belong in the F category is this run salvageable so basically we're starting at I think this is gonna be a nice I guess second part of the challenge where we're starting around 80 
and we have twenty thousand dollars okay so i actually have an idea let's try and beat this with the towers that are already on screen so instead of using uh you know the uh the bottom pant alchemist or the the buccaneers or whatever let's try and use oh are we fine actually i see a couple of i'm gonna need the ucv to do some work on those guys i think we are yeah we're fine okay so here's what i was thinking uh instead of buying new towers how about we only use buccaneers and alchemists to finish this game so how about we use something like oh i got the wrong cross pass and all of them don't i ah you know what i'm gonna do it let's get a pirate lord Let's get Power Lord over here, and then I'm gonna buy a. Um, is there even a like a chance of me buying? Yes, there is. Okay, it's this guy. So I want to get the um, the 502 and the uh, I guess the 250 Buccaneer. So let's get the Power Lord first, and let's use these towers we already have on screen. So that's gonna be the Power Lord, and then this guy is going to be a destroyer and eventually the carrier flagship. And let's see if that is the way that we can beat this challenge. So we're still using the towers that we have. So no, no, you know, using the tag zone or something like that as the main DPS. Only the, the Buccaneers and the Alchemists, but uh, let's see if we can beat this thing. So this should be a lot better. Let me use the ability on this thing. Oh my god, it feels so much better when you have actual towers that do some some actual stuff in the game. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I know it's round 89, but I'm super excited for this next round. So I bought a couple of, you know what? I'm just gonna buy even more of the old Alchemists. And I'm really excited for this one because this is this was actually my original plan to basically spam these bottom path alchemists because they do some extra damage to DDTs and get at the end for the camel detection. So let's see if we're gonna be able to pop these DDTs using only the alchemists. This should be the wackiest, wackiest way that you've seen deal with DDTs, but it seems to be working, I think. Oh my god, it's actually working. I mean they're not doing a lot of damage, but when you have like like 10 of them, I think that <laughs> helps a little bit. So I'm really curious to see how they do on round 93 versus the 80s and then maybe 95. You know what we should do for 95? We should probably get something like a Sabo Ninja and then use the Sabo Ninja ability. We have the Relentless Glue and we have uh, this guy, the Glue, I guess it's a Glue Strike. And let's see if it's going to be possible to beat these guys using only Let the Gold Alchemist. I mean, I guess it's going to be the Pirate Lord, but this is like the back cross by Pirate Lord. And it's not going to be able to deal with the entire run by itself. Okay, 93, a lot more DDTs incoming this time. Let's see how we're going to do. Let the Gold Alchemist versus a bunch of DDTs. Let's see if they're going to be able to pop them. I feel like they are. I feel like they're doing well. I mean, they kind of made it uh, to, to this part where the village is, but I, I, you know what, you know what, I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay, so let's give them a helping hand, let's do it like this with the blue Sabo, and I'm gonna have all of them on strong. So I think there are a couple there on first, like this one. Let's just make sure these guys are focusing the DDTs and nothing else. So everyone is on strong, it looks like, and let's see if we can do it now. So uh, I think I'm gonna wait a second and then use the ability, so maybe use the ability now. And let's see, let the gold alchemists versus a bunch of DDTs. How is the DPS going on one of these guys? 920, 960. That's like 42 damage, but it depends on how many balloons he hits. Let me use the UCAV on the... The UCAV doesn't hit DDTs, by the way. Uh, at least not until Etienne gets level 20. So it's looking like it's... It's close, guys. It's super close. No, no, they didn't make it. It was super close, but they didn't make it. Just, it was barely there. So let's do it like this. I bought this Habo as well, and I'm going to use Etienne's abilities. And let's see how we're going to do on this one. So Etienne's abilities cannot hit uh, DDT, so it's fine. This is going to be serving there as a cleanup. And the Glue Strike cannot hit DDTs as well. So I'm going to be using basically all of the abilities except the hook. I'm actually going to use the hook if it comes too close. Let's use the ability now. Let's get Etienne's abilities up and running. And let's see how much of a difference this thing is gonna make. This is the weirdest way to beat round 60. I was gonna say 63, but I meant 95. But this seems to be working, guys. I bought a couple more, and this actually seems to be working. We actually defeated round 95 with a bunch of lead to gold alchemists. That is the that's probably the weirdest way that you can beat this round. The run continues, it looks like. So 96, let's use I think I'm gonna use a hook ability onto the ZOMG, so let's use it now. And these guys are making it actually kind of far. I mean, a good thing about these guys, about the uh, Alchemists, is that we have the Perishing Potion upgrade, which uh, removes the fortified state off of, well, it says smaller boons, but it's basically only ceramics. So as soon as these guys hit the ceramic boon, it's going to get defortified, which removes a huge part of the RB, and that's going to be very useful on round 98. Even though we cannot defortify now the big ones, we can defortify the ceramics, and that should be a little bit helpful. Okay, so I'm not going to use the hook for this one, I'm gonna let these guys pop it naturally so because I want to save the hook for 98 as soon as uh, these guys appear because I, I we're gonna need a lot of damage for 98 basically. It, 98 has like 350,000 RB which is the most out of any round of chips mode. 
So you really want to be erasing the Darby and also want to be getting this thing as soon as possible, which is not going to do that well, but it's better than nothing. So let's get this thing going. This rat also makes a lot of money as well. So I feel like we should be able to, to afford this thing mid round and then get some, some, some damage boost, I guess, while everything's happening. So let's see how we do. So let's keep using this ability. It's hooking in a ZUMG and a BFV, which is nice. It's by the carrier flagship now. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna try and save the Sabo ability. So let me use Etienne's drones now. I mean, these Moab class boons, I feel like they're making it kind of far into the center. But because we have these alchemists, the ceramics are not as big of a problem as they normally would be because these alchemists are defortifying them. So it's basically like normal super ceramics. And there it is. Okay, so these alchemists actually came out to be useful. Two more rounds, round 99. I saved the Sabo for this one, so let's use it now. Uh, is Etienne level 20? Yeah, he is. So if we use the UCV, well, we can basically damage the DDTs now. So I think that's a little bit helpful and that should help us erase this entire round along with the Sabo. Yes, there we go. And it's round 100. So these guys actually do a little bit more damage versus round 100 as well. And if you guys have ever done like tier 2 chimps, this is how you do it. You, you do it with the Perishing Potions because they do a lot more damage. You just basically spam a bunch of uh, second tier alchemists, like Perishing Potions alchemists. I mean, we are taking our time for sure, but it pops. So let's use the ability. Let's hook one of these guys. Use the Glue Strike. And that is it. So we were finally able to somehow able to save this run using basically the towers that we only have. The index was absolutely right. These are the worst towers imaginable that you could pick for chimps mode. But that was a, that was a fun video, and I really enjoyed playing this one. Actually, it's it's one of those weird setups that you get at the end, which which kind of in my book it's like. When you start, when you have to start thinking about finding ways to beat this thing, when you start going out of the box, that's where the fun is. So it was super fun playing this, and uh, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one.